Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. And the reality of mirrors. Mati put the heading on the talk inshaAllah for the reality of mirrors. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum. And that uh, I am an oppressor to myself, an abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And but by the grace of Allah that I am still in existence existence and that Allah shall address us from His rahmah and mercy. Is my voice clear? They say my mic is lower than other mics because they sabotage my mic. They say, oh don't have let the shaykh, let's all let him, let us sing louder. <laughs> Especially the mojo guy, he's got super powerful microphone. InshaAllah min ash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. InshaAllah the understanding of Sayyidina Muhammad describing that the believer is a mirror to his brother and has a reality that this world there's a mirror in which we are casting a reflection. And this mirror of who I am, it's sending a false image of me and by who calls me and what they think of me gives me an understanding of who I am. And that's not my reality, that's not even the look of my reality. It's all like a house of illusion. And this mirror in our spiritual path has to be broken. That we break this world of illusion and delusion. The illusion that our parents gave us, our friends gave us and whoever called upon us, what they cast upon us of who we are and what we should be is a way of illusion and delusion. What Sayyidina Muhammad wrote with that holy hadith is the oceans of reality. That the believer is a mirror to his brother and sister. Means that when you find a believer in life, and not everybody is a believer, means that the level in which this talk is one whom they have iman. So this is not people who accepted Islam. This is at the level of those whom Allah, Allah granted a nur. Their nur is been granted and as a result they have an iman, a faith. They because of the light of that faith they are reflections. So anyone who looks at them doesn't really see them. Because what happens with the ayna? That's why you in your spiritual class these are things that you put notes and then certain things you highlight and post it. That these Ahlul Iman wherever in life if we should be lucky enough to find one that when we deal with them, interact with them, learn from them they are merely mirrors because the words of Sayyidina Muhammad are 1000% true. I'm not seeing the shaykh, I'm not understanding the character of the shaykh. My interaction with the shaykh is, is at a level where I think I know him is incorrect. You have no understanding because he doesn't know himself either. He's on a journey to know himself too. So nobody could claim to know someone when they don't even know themselves. Even in they know themselves they don't know themselves because Allah at every moment is in a new tajalli. And Prophet is inheriting so every moment Prophet is in a new tajalli. And in every moment spiritual seekers are being raised with new tajallis. There's no one place you reach and say, now I know myself. It's infinite in its capacity. So then you can't say, I know him. When my path was not to know him but was to know myself 
as a result, how is my interaction with that mirror? And that mirror is casting who I am because I don't have the training to understand myself. I don't have spiritual farasal to go inside myself and see my character defects. So then that's why they train that keep looking at their picture, keep watching the videos, keep keeping their company. It is a ayna, it's a mirror for you to understand not who they are but who you are. Because the light that shine from them you find all your aggressions, you find all your anger. Every time they make you angry you should be journaling because this is a school, this is not the philosophy class. Every time I become angered I should be writing, why he just said what he said and I got angry, I got disturbed, I got confused, I got… whatever I got it was to show me it's like advanced medical technology. It's like an MRI and a CAT scan. As soon as you look, <laughs> wahoo, yahoo, alhamdulillah. <laughs> there was a big hack. <laughs> so it's like an MRI. As soon as they're looking, you're watching the video, looking at their picture, learning how to make your tafakkur, oh, their image starts to hit to you and it begins to cast all these sicknesses. That's this concept of an MRI when you go to a doctor, things that are inside of you have to be brought out so that you can truly deep clean. That's why when you interact with them, the, the, their interaction is only mimicking for you because in every face they're different with every person because each one has a different tajalli, a different reality. As soon as you get in front of the mirror completely their interaction with you going to be completely something different because now you're in, in the full presence of the mirror. When you make tafakkur and contemplation, you watch the video alone in your home, that mirror is casting to you. If you took the path serious you would be writing with a book all the time, your muhasaba and your accounting, this made me angry, this made me angry, this made me disturbed, this made me confused, this made me to have questions, this made me to have doubt. And it's not the shaykh, it's that mirror that reflecting back to you that these are sicknesses that lie dormant within yourself or they're apparent and Allah wants you to know them. Otherwise how you can clean and be responsible to clean that which you don't see? So they're responsible is to bring it out. Once you begin to clean and to clean and to clean then they begin to teach you from the level of cleaning begins to move this level of ish begins to come. You can't love yourself, you don't know how to. We don't know how to. When we begin to look at them in this love for the Divinely Presence, they begin to reflect that love of Divinely Presence within our hearts. Means this whole secret of mirroring is that when I love them because I, I truly can't love myself because we don't know how to without a state of arrogance and pride. So then we were taught to efface, efface and be nothing. This true state of love when we love them, respect them, be of service to them, make our, our life committed to the turuq and to the way, we begin to have a love and then Allah deposits a secret within their heart for me, for the one whom seeking. I don't know how to find that love within myself. Many people expect the world to love them but they don't know how to truly even love themselves, correct themselves, perfect themselves. They seek love in all the wrong places, thinking that they can change people, be like this, be like that so that I can be happy. Tariqah comes and teaches, no, no. That's, that's not what Allah wanted, that's not love. Trying to modify and change people to suit you, 
you're not going to find out who you are. You just manipulated the scenery. You move the characters the way you want it instead of letting Allah control the character. Each character will come into my scene in life to disclose what Allah wants in that scene. Once I become a seeker and I start to work on my character, I realize that now everyone in this house of mirrors is reflecting to me of my character because I don't see it within myself. You know to, to cut here is very difficult and pull something out, I can't see it. But if I put a mirror up and look, I can go through the mirror, so a lot of medicine they were reflecting. I can look through the mirror and see people serve as that reality for us. When Allah enters you into the turuq, He makes all the students to be minor reflections of the reflection of the shaykh. One, the shaykh is the full mirror that sending all these realities, you're never knowing him. So, oh, I kind of know the shaykh, you don't know anything, you don't know yourself. You haven't even seen what he really looks like. Don't look at his form on this physical body. What's his image in the world of light? Then all the students serve as mirrors, so your interaction with all of them, whatever they're bringing out in your characteristic is something wrong with you. Because you don't put the blame ever on other people that they're this, they're that, they're this. No, because I'm here to find my sickness. I checked into the hospital to know my sickness. I didn't check into the hospital to diagnose the hospital. That would be kind of arrogant. I came to this hospital of ishq to reach this love and my sicknesses are blocking me. My sicknesses are veiling me from everything I'm asking for. I'm asking for it. I'm asking Ya Rabbi, oh grant me these doors, grant me these openings, let me to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet is reminding then, take away your sicknesses, take away these bad characteristics. So then everyone is a reflection of something Allah wants me to know. When the person's aggressive with me, there's something in my nature that's aggressive and intolerant. When the person's rude with me, Allah wants me to taste. Do you see how that rudeness, it hurts? Don't be rude. Don't break people's hearts. And that's why the du'a, because that's why if you copy their du'as, your path becomes easy. Ufa'udu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ibad. When I'm being oppressed too much by characteristics, I say, Ya Rabbi, I know you're watching, I know this is it, it's just too much. I understand it, I understand whatever coming to me, this is something I have to work on, I got it. But if you're not making the du'a, then all is thinking you didn't get it. So he keeps sending more of these characters that keep aggravating and agitating. But the smart one, the one whom excels in tariqah is writing and writes that, why? Why this person says like this, I become angry. Why is this person said like this, I become agitated. Why the shaykh talks like this, I become… I begin to learn about myself. I was here to understand myself and then that love is deposited into their heart. When I begin to love them, this is the true love Allah begins to reflect and that's why these awliya's recitings that, I found love in you. I found a Divine ishq in you and as a result of finding that love, Allah reflected it back into my own heart and I became a shaqeen. Because I didn't love the dirty way of myself and my bad character and arrogance and pompous and this love, when I sought and I clean and I clean and I clean and a life continuously of cleaning, of monitoring, why am I getting upset? What is Allah trying to show me in this interaction I got upset? So I'm continuously cleaning because a house that's not clean, it's not livable. You can't say, I cleaned it once a year. Your home is to be cleaned every day, every day, every day. It's, it's, it's for us that tasawwuf is to continuously clean. But in this love, we can't find this Divine love in ourself. It's cast into the mirror. As soon as we search, I found, when I truly found Allah, 
is when I found that love within them. When I found the love of the shaykh, love of Sayyidina Muhammad love of these awliyaullah, my love for them, I found a Divine love. As a result Allah cast that love within my heart because you be with whom you love. As soon as I loved them and realized this light of Prophet is reflecting in them. This light of Allah is reflecting in Sayyidina Muhammad If I don't know that, I don't know where I'm going. How could they open any door when you don't know who you're standing in the presence of? That's why this is a school of adab. You, st you still don't know who, how you're making your salawat? Somebody come and say, oh I'm a, I make zikr of Allah, I make zikr of Allah like he thought he reached the highest. No, the zikr of Allah is the salawat on Prophet You're not understanding yet the adab of this reflection and this mirror. This mirror is so powerful that La ilaha illallah reflects to the mirror which is known as Muhammadun Rasulullah What happens when the mirror shatters? Everything collapses. This whole of creation collapses back to La ilaha illallah. So when Allah causes everything to taste of death, every angel will die, every paradise will collapse, everything will collapse. Means what? Allah smashed the mirror and in reality nothing really existed, it was just a reflection. It goes back to? La ilaha illallah. So it means the depth of understanding mirroring is unimaginable. All our technology is based on this mirroring of satellites. Every signal is being mirrored to somewhere to be sent to you. Your madad is being mirrored. As soon as you make your madad the shaykhs are sending to your soul a reflection and this series of mirroring comes and hits you. Because they're all reflecting back these realities. So this is an infinite ocean of reality. But in these sayings of Rumi and isolation and solitude and, and love and finding love and I really can't love Allah until I found my beloved. When I found that one who represents Sayyidina Muhammad to me, I fell in love. And in that love it became a reflection and this is a love of ihtiram, this is not a romantic love. This is a love of ihtiram like your love for Sayyidina Muhammad It's not something to be romantic and dirtied from a dunya understanding. This is an ishq and that's why these nuts are so beautiful. This is an ishq that they found a di Divine love that's so powerfully intoxicating. That if they get a gaze of the face of Sayyidina Muhammad they will become in a drunken state. So euphoric, so blessed, so excited, they can walk on, on water from that ecstasy, from that grace and the immense rahmah and generosity of that holy face that you actually looked at me. And I knew with all my wrong and all my bad, I don't deserve a gaze from your holy face but Ya Rasul Kareem, Wajikil Kareem, the generous face of Allah that you gazed at me, took away every mushkilat, took away every type of difficulty, took away all my despair, took away my feeling that I have to achieve a maqam and there is no maqam for me to achieve but you looked at me. You looked at me and my life became clear. That look at me and hold me and take me to my destination and that's all I need. As if in this dirty state you looked at me, I know that everything is washed and purified and cleaned and then the rest of this dunya is but an illusion and time that we're passing. Means this way of seeking has immense realities. That the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad they're not something empty, they're not something shallow. They're, they're oceans that one word, he, Uhi al-Qur'an that Prophet Allah 
describing that he doesn't speak but that it's revelation. He doesn't speak but that it's revelation. What type of power is this revelation that every kalam, every word, every utterance and breath of Sayyidina Muhammad the immense ocean of its reality. So it means our life is about reaching this goal. Our life is to be in the mirror of these associations, find these ahbab and lovers, keep their company, keep the company of the students. In the craziness of their character you find your defect. You find if, if that's what you're looking for to reach to a station, reach to the proximity then you find your characteristic, you'll understand why everyone's aggravating and agitating and bothering and you write, you write, you write and then you will become apparent in your writing. Who knows himself will know his Lord. First Lord are those bad characteristics that govern me. They are like big shaitans that run on my character, make me get angry, make me get like this. May those you're not serving Allah, you're serving these shaitans that make your character to flip. If you didn't fight them and start to kill them, how are you going to reach to Allah That's why then when I begin to know myself, I know what's sparking me and I'm now ready to fight it. Not to slap the person who bothered you but slap myself. Go home, talk, you know, get these things and pow, pow. So on some of these movies, like, ah, chow, chow. sometimes you feel like you deserve a good beating from yourself. I can't believe I did that and just you don't know what to do. But that's important to have that understanding in my life that, ha, I could do like that, make istighfar, cry, penalize myself, do something as a punishment for myself, pay reparation, do something so that you stop doing that. You don't keep doing something bad and then just go on to the next day. So they understood then this understanding and the reality of mirroring. When we're talking today it was an important subject. This whole tafakkur, this whole world of contemplation is for the world of malakut. They're not interested in the world of form. This world of malakut is what they want to reach to. This world of malakut is what they want their connection from. So they were talking about the reality of Sayyidina Khidr is salam and Sayyidina Khidr is salam is an unseen servant of Allah He's not a seen servant. The example of Nabi Musa salam in the Qur'an that he wanted a knowledge and I wanted a knowledge from where the two rivers meet. So it means, La ilaha illallah, alif lam lam he, wow, hits to Muhammadun Rasulullah This he wow, he is who? He wow is who? He says, I want where they meet, I want your servant of who? He set out with Sayyidina Yeshua and with Sayyidina Yeshua he's going and he has a dried fish to eat for lunch. He gets tired and says, let's have uh, some, some lunch, uh, what do we have to eat? He said, it's ajeeb. Yeshua is telling Nabi Musa this is very ajeeb, I'm sorry to inform you. Uh, when we stop back there at the rock, this huti, so every, every word Allah in is like a programming, this fish is called huti. This huti that was dead and dried came to life, got up and jumped into this ocean. So between La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah a huti got up and jumped into the water because they didn't see Sayyidina Khidr He wasn't standing there and they passed him because they were hungry. He's not someone to be seen. Means our life is not you're going to go somewhere and meet it and it comes to you like your 
Hazrat Maryam that it comes as a table of food in your presence salam. This life was about seeking for Kalimullah, one whom speaks to Allah Allah giving a sharat to meet that servant, to meet that reality he had to use his understanding of guidance. And he immediately picked up when a dead fish comes to life, this is what I was looking for. There's the servant of Allah that has the secret of muhi al qulub wa mahi al dunub. He has the inheritance of Muhammadun Rasulullah that he can with his light muhi al qulub immediately bring everything to life because Nur Muhammadi Sirat al Anwar, Nur al Anwar Sirat al Asrar, it's the secret of every existence. When he casts the light on what Allah want that light to be cast by virtue of the light coming out, muhi al qulub, it revives everything that's dead. Mahi al dunub, it crushes every sin because the sin is what making it to be dead. The sin is what making things to be blocked. So with their light in one shot they have the ability to destroy the sin and by virtue of destroying that sin with that light, it comes back to life. He knew that this servant of who is from that reality and that reality is what he wanted. Let's go back. So Sayyidina Khidr was not somebody seen. He had to look for a sign for that reality. Then you understand in the companionship that it required good characteristic to see Sayyidina Khidr because Nabi Musa wanted to see. He says, I, I got the attribute of hearing but Ya Rabbi let me to see you. So, so who wanted a high level of basir, high level of, of vision. So when he asked Prophet Allah said, go. We're going to send our glory onto the mountain, the glory of Allah Nur Muhammadi At that time the light of Prophet appeared and Nabi Musa qashya out. He witnessed with his soul the light and awwal al-Muslimin took his shahada under the flag of Sayyidina Muhammad negating his reality to accept the awwal al-Muslimin means I'm now accepting La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah means then everybody in this path is to be negated and brought down. As a result of that he wanted now to see from these servants, Allah sent him to Sayyidina Khidr who is not to be seen by the eye, it's seen by the heart and that's why they passed it. When he came back and realized with his tafakkur, this is the point. At that time he was introduced to Sayyidina Khidr which is the 11th shaykh of the Naqshbandi order to draw your significance that whatever secret Sayyidina Khidr has now because he's alive, he's Hayyu al-Qayyum, he represents Bahrul Hayat, he's alive and his secret runs in the tariqah and the shaykhs that are authorized by the tariqah, they hold that secret of Sayyidina Khidr They are servants of Hayyu al-Qayyum, those whom they hold an ijazah from that reality. They are servants of Hayyu al-Qayyum, they are the servants of that reality of who? They've been granted from the hay, it's hidayat, they've been granted from the wow, Ahl muhabbat Ahbab and they are servants of who? And this is the city of realities wa Ali Babahu. So this requires the cutting of your head because you're not going to see them with these eyes. This requires the head of no importance. Declassify, de-signify your head is of no value here that you need to have a good heart. At that time Nabi Musa introduced to Sayyidina Khidr he saw him now with his heart and the first thing that Sayyidina Khidr is now talking to him that in this way don't talk, don't ask me any questions. Why? 
Because as soon as you begin to talk, your bad character will veil you from me. Your questioning and having shak is going to veil you from seeing me, so by the nature of our association will be finished. It was warning him, warning him that, don't ask, don't ask because Allah is requiring a high level of purity of your heart which no shak, because shak brings a, a veil onto the heart. When they have no shak and they're walking on water, they're seeing. That's why the servant of Allah said, don't ask questions. Not because he can't tolerate questions and give a nice answer, he said, this way is not for you to ask. This way is for purity of heart. So then now imagine the difficulty of Nabi Musa accompanying somebody he can't see. That's why then he went to a boat. Imagine somebody break a boat and Nabi Musa sitting on it. <laughs> they are Prophet of God, why you just broke this poor man's boat? Because they can't see Sayyidi Khidr. They can only see Nabi Musa breaking the boat. So that's why he's shocked, I'm Prophet of God. How you just did something like that? The people are going to come against me. They say he's walking around breaking things. <laughs> And that's, that's the level of the difficulty of the task. Then he said, the, the boy passed away. He said, how you passed away a boy because they're going to blame me now. Nobody sees you. We're walking and all of a sudden the boy died. They say, oh look, Nebi Musa is walking around. He's breaking boats and killing people. <laughs> then you understand how difficult that test was. And that's why he was like, this is, you know, please, why did you do that? And he says, you know, this, this is about to, this something going about to come out of this. Don't, don't ask because he didn't want to veil himself. But because of the concern of what people are going to say when these things are happening and they don't see you. And then he went to the wall, he's tired and he was ordered to repair the wall. But Sayyidina Khidr wasn't helping, he wasn't <laughs> he was just building the wall by himself tired. Hungry, so why can't I ask for, for money for fixing the wall? He said, don't ask. And then by the end the veil shut and said, this is where me and you would go, we part. So means Say, Sayyidina Khidr Salaam then became veiled from the questioning. Sayyidina Abdul Faiz al-Daqistani, Naqib al-Ummah, Wa'iz al-Ummah described, he was sitting with an ulama and they entered into a carriage and then they were sitting a third shaykh appeared and that shaykh looked at two of them and said, who's whose shaykh? Are you his shaykh or he's your shaykh? He asked the other one first. And the other one said, he's neither my shaykh nor not am I his shaykh. And then he started to talk to Shaykh Daqistani and Shaykh Daqistani was still talking to this third man which was Sayyidina Khidr Salaam. Kept talking to him, talking to him and this other man saying, I don't see anyone, where did he go? He said, your bad character veiled you from him. Allah was testing you. What did it hurt for you to say, he's my shaykh and I'm nothing? But because the arrogance of the ulama, they, they're like a peacock. They would never uh, ever try to say something like that. So it means what? This way of, of seeing this and realizing this reality is not your salah. He you didn't get there. Because he prayed and prayed amazing amounts of prayer, he didn't get there by his zakah, didn't get there by his psalm, didn't get there by his fasting, he got there by his good characteristics. So if you keep a good heart, a loving heart, that is the whole way. With this loving heart and good characteristic, the training, do your tafakkur, do your muraqaba. Any one of these shaykhs of the shajara of the silsila of Naqshbandiyat al aliyah once you learn how to make your connection, once you learn how to make all that you have to do, you ask the shaykh, Madad, Madad, Sayyidi, dress us from the lights of Sayyidina Khidr, Ya Sayyidina Abbas Khidr, bi madadakum and nazarakum, that come and send your fires upon me, your dress upon me. And that's why there are maqams on this earth, one in Umayyad Mosque that the name of Sayyidina Khidr is written, when you sit there with a clean heart, Sayyidina Khidr salam appears, gives you salam, gives you whatever fires and blessings. And the other one was when we went to Istanbul, went to not Istanbul but we went to Bursa 
And in that masjid there was a big beautiful wow and all the local people said that this is a maqam for Sayyidina Khidr Sit here, connect your heart, you sit there and then immediately then Sayyidina Khidr why to veil himself? Veil for the good heart, sincere heart, so I mean this whole way is based on good character and opening the heart. Break the bad character, break the mirror and open the realities tafakkur and the realities of energy, the realities of malakut. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding, more and more dress of these light and these blessings and that these holy souls facilitate for us, facilitate for us like a bridge between mulk and malakut. They come as a bridge that they begin to teach us these knowledges of malakut that are reaching into dunya. We want to walk on this, on this bridge towards the malakut and to receive the knowledges of malakut and for these souls to begin to teach this malakut, they're asking to be from this love and this ishq and good characteristics. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yatifoon, salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.